Our last session, our last interview is with a guy I covered, I covered m most of these folks, but <laughs> a guy I covered in high school, I just pulled up a video of when, when we interviewed uh, Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium, Seth Butler from Liberty Benton. Come on up, Seth. So I, I tore my meniscus um, halfway through my junior season, um, and it was something that um, a lot of people didn't think I was going to come back from. Um, I had won the state 800 meters as a sophomore. I wanted to defend my title. Um, and I think the thing that encouraged me was um, hearing people say that they didn't, they didn't have to compete against me that year. And so like, oh, we don't have to run against Seth. We don't have to run, run against Seth. And so um, my motivation was at least getting back to the state level and um, getting to compete against people who said that they weren't going to see me that year. Finished high school, went off to Colorado State University and uh, ran out there. What was that college experience like for you? Um, you know, overall, it was much more centered on my faith than it was my athletic career. Um, you know, I, I went out there, immediately was the, the number one 800-meter guy on the team, um, dropped two seconds. Um, and the 800 from my senior year of high school to freshman year of college, made it to the, the national stage. Um, and my sophomore year, going into junior year, it was going to be an Olympic year. So me and my coach were strategizing like, hey, you know, you might have a shot at at least going through the trials. Um, let's see what we can do. Let's ramp up your training. Um, but due to medical reasons, um, I almost had to end my career. Um, passing out during workouts, um, after races, before I even finished the, across the finish line. And um, the pivotal, you know, impactful part of my college career was at the end of that sophomore year being in and out of the, the medical center, um, the coaches sitting me down and saying, hey, we love you, we care about you, but you might want to transfer because you're a liability. Um, they were concerned about me going into a coma if I continue to pass out and have these episodes. And so at that moment, it was, um, you know, God saying, hey, are you going to transfer and chase your, your track career, or are you going to stay where I've established you and, and pursue me? And so um, fortunately, I was able to, to finish out my junior and senior year. Um, you know, I made it back to the first round of nationals, didn't compete in the way that I had my freshman year, um, but I found Jesus. So that was, that's much, much more rewarding. How difficult was that decision? Wrestling with that, I, I want to keep running. Maybe I should transfer. You know, take us through that. Yeah, uh, I was actually asked this earlier this week. I did um, a speaking engagement for some high school students, and um, that was probably, you know, as a 19, 20 year old, one of the toughest decisions I had to make. You know, I, I had just put my faith in Christ my freshman year of college. Um, I was not pursuing the Lord prior to going out to Colorado State. Um, and so, you know, I, I had found a good Christian community. I had a good mentor. Um, I was learning a lot about the Lord and what it meant to be a follower of Christ. And so in my mind, I thought that, okay, that means I'm going to get blessed athletically. All right, I have Jesus now, so that means I'm going to run like I've never ran before. I'm going to train like I've never trained before. And it was the opposite. Um, I ran worse as a sophomore in college than I did junior and senior year of high school. Um, but that decision, again, looking back on it now, and even in the moment, it was, um, you know, the Lord was allowing me to go through some really hard trials because um, I was young in my faith, and he was kind of testing me, saying, hey, are you really going to run after me, or are you going to run after your own desires? So here I'm giving you this opportunity to transfer down to sea level and, and go back to a school that's going to maybe allow you to be a better runner or you can stay with this community that I've given you, um, what are you going to do? Um, so it was, it was a tough decision, but ultimately um, I stayed at CSU. Um, I met my wife. I'm going to have a daughter in October. Um, right, congratulations. So I think I made the right choice, and it was something that, that the Lord allowed me to go through. We see that a lot. You know, someone comes to faith in Christ, and then the adversity hits. Right. What would you say to someone who's questioning in this moment? That's saying, oh, I, you know, I signed up for this. I thought I wanted to be a Christian, but tough times are coming. What, what would you say to that person to encourage them to run towards Jesus like you did? Yeah, I, um, Christianity isn't, um, isn't easy. 
um, we're called to forsake everything for Christ, right? Um, and that means our desires, our joys, the things that we found fulfillment in. And I think in my mind as, as a young guy who just put his faith in the Lord, I thought it was the opposite where like, okay, I have Jesus now, so that means everything's going to be good. But that's not, as I learned more, as I grew in my faith, that isn't the case. Oftentimes it's the opposite. Um, I lost friendships over me wanting to pursue the Lord. Freshman year, um, you know, I had to go to my roommates who, you know, I went to parties and stuff with. And I was like, hey, guys, you know, I don't want to I don't want to do that anymore. I'm trying to live a different life. And I lost friendships. Um, and so you lose a lot, but you have to count the cost. And so that's what I would say to somebody who's really struggling through adversity is, hey, have you really sat down and counted the cost of what it means to follow Christ? If you haven't, maybe you should and decide, is it worth um, is it worth pursuing? And for me, it was. Why was it worth pursuing? What happened your junior, senior year? It wasn't athletically necessarily, but it was your relationship with Christ that gave you that joy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, found, I found more fulfillment in, um, in following the Lord than I did my athletic success. Um, and it, it actually freed me up to compete with a different mindset where before I was concerned about winning all the time. And I, and I won a lot my freshman year. I know a lot of people who've never won a college race and I won more races than I, than I lost as a freshman in college. And that's what I was used to doing. I'm, I'm going to find a way to win. Um, but after going through that sophomore year, junior and senior year, the Lord changed my heart um, to the point where he's like, hey, I've given my life for you. Now I want you to give your life for others. So what that looked like, I got involved with FCA. Um, he's given me a lot of opportunities to speak life into other people who are struggling in different areas and um, be a mentor to others and pour myself out in the same way that, that Jesus poured himself out uh, for my sake. And so there's a lot of joy and fulfillment that comes with that question about it. Uh, I was reading this morning, it's near the end of the Bible, Revelation 22. Uh, it's last seven verses, and, and these are three of them. Uh, verses 14 through 16 said, Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. And that last sentence really jumped out to me. All who love to live a lie, because we're surrounded, you know, by people that they're trying to find something, mm -hmm. and you found it, and you grabbed onto it, and you said, "This is what I want more than athletic success." And as you are ready to bring a young daughter into the world, it's a girl, right? It is. Okay, you got a name picked out? Not yet. <laughs> okay, that's okay. No pressure. We didn't tell anybody. Actually, we picked my daughter's name the day she was born, so you got plenty of time. Okay. Plenty of time. But as, as we're surrounded by that, we have an opportunity to be faithful uh, to God. And, and it all starts with being, or having our, our robes washed. You know, it is our choice to say, God, I know I make mistakes. I know I'm a sinner. I, I want to follow you. I want you to wash my robes. So it's an effort for us to take that step. And so tonight, maybe one of you out here wants to take that step. You know, you're struggling with identity. We've heard that tonight. Uh, you're struggling with disappointment. You're struggling with questions. You're struggling with something. And you want to say, I need someone in my life who will guide me, who will wash my robes. Because then we get two things. We get the kingdom of, of, of heaven here on earth, and we get the kingdom of heaven. This is a picture of heaven, a beautiful picture, to enter the gates of a city, eat fruit from the tree of life that was back in the garden. And we don't want to be outside that city. And, and second to last verse in the Bible, verse 20 says, He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. It's urgent. It's urgent. There's death all the time. And, and we, we, don't want to, we don't want to be at that point without Jesus. I know you would agree with that, Seth. So right now we're just going to pray. Uh, on the back of your programs, uh, you have an opportunity to, to take a look at some commitments. Because we came here tonight, you had a good meal. You had a chance to listen to some really encouraging things about sports, about life. Uh, but most importantly, what all of our speakers have said is they couldn't be here today without a relationship with Jesus. They have had their, their robes washed uh, by Jesus. They've been forgiven of their sins. And they have taken that step to walk with him, just like Seth talked about here. To take that step. It's not going to be easy, but you're going to have joy. You're going to have peace. You're going to have life. 
And so I'm just going to allow 30 seconds if you all bow your heads and close your eyes. And if you're sitting here today thinking, I, I don't know what I believe, that's okay. If you're sitting here today thinking, God, I need you in my life. I want, I want to give up everything and follow you because of what you did for me when Jesus died on the cross. Maybe you've been to church. Maybe you've been around this place before, and, and you want to recommit to, to him. You want to live a life fulfilling so you can see what adventure he's going to take you on. I'm just going to leave a little time of silence, and then you can pray with me or pray in your hearts whatever God is leading you to do. Father, we are broken. We are dirty. We need help. <laughs> Thank you for Jesus who came to help us. Thank you that he died on the cross. He died for each one in this room. And Lord, I thank you that we can just come to you and repent of our sins, repent of our selfishness, turn the other direction and follow you tonight. I thank you that each person in this room could do that if they want. Just a simple prayer tonight. You hear them. And then as they pick up that cross that you bared, they want to follow you. And so Lord, for those here tonight that want to follow you, I pray that they, they're hearing your voice and they make that commitment. They follow you through the good times, through the bad times, through everything you will lead them through because you promise to never forsake us, never to leave us. You will walk with us. So Lord, may tonight be a night we remember, a night where our lives changed because we committed to go deeper with you. We committed to be your servants, to be your warriors, to be your followers. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you made any kind of commitment tonight, first time, long time, you can please fill out your information. Check that on the, on the back of the, of the programs. Leave them here. If you want to get involved with your FCA group, if you have an FCA group, we'll connect you. If your school doesn't, we will also make one happen. Uh, if there's any more information you would like, we want to meet with you as well. And I've got these FCA Sports New Testaments for anyone who wants one. Come on up and stage. Uh, I've got a whole box of them. We'd love to give them out on your table as the U.S. Plastics. Uh, testimonial guide, Steph Curry, other athletes in there. Those are free to take. We've got more if you need extras. Uh, feel free to give them out to your friends. Tonight's a celebration. As we read in Revelation, blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. If you made a commitment tonight, you're entering that city. You're going to eat from the tree of life. It's better than any Super Bowl championship. It's better than any national championship. It's better than anything. You get that. And we want to journey with you as well. So please let me know.